Councilors, I hereby call the City Council for July 22, 2019 into order. Please stand and we'll salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Councilors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We have a, uh, a pretty uh, good agenda tonight, so with that being said, Mr. Clerk. We have the acceptance of the minutes of June 24, 2019. Accept them placed on file. Acceptance of the minutes of June 24, 2019, special city council meeting relative to the election of mayor. That too is accepted and placed on file. We have a hearing, a petition of National Grid and Mass Electric requesting permission to install new pole P7-1, 70 feet east of existing pole number seven, in order to refeed the UG service and existing manhole MH82 on Warren Avenue in West Elm Street. In City Clerk's Office, June 24th, 2019. Hearing is signed for July 22nd, 2019 at 7 p.m. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Time having arrived, I hereby declare the hearing is open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come to the podium. Is there anyone here? Okay. Good evening, sir, how are you? Could state your name for the record, please. Good evening, uh, Tim Lyford, National Grid Electric, 100 East Ashland Street. Um, in favor of the petition, petition, of course. Um, did you want me to go over? Yes, please. What the petition is for. Yes, please. Certainly. Um, so, as previously stated, National Grid is petitioning to install one new pole, approximately 70 feet east of existing pole seven, and for also approximately 50 feet of two four-inch conduits um, to existing manhole 82, and these are to refeed existing underground services in the area. Thank you for that clarification. Councils, any questions? No. Uh, is there anyone else here in the chamber here in favor? Third and final time, I'm gonna close that part of the hearing. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone in here in opposition? Third and final time in opposition? That part of the hearing's closed. We'll vote on it at the end of the evening tonight. Thank you very much for your time. Go on to the next agenda item, please. Petition of CP Exchange, <coughs> VILLC, DBA, Ocean Honda, Brockton, 46352 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, for a transfer of garage license located at 300 Manley Street, Brockton. The current owner is Firth LLC. In council, in clerk's office, June 13, 2019. Hearing is signed for July 22nd at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If there's anyone here in favor, please come to the podium relative to this, to this matter. Good evening, sir. Could you kindly just state your name for the record, please? Jared Nikolsky. Could you give us a, some information and statement oh, yes. relative uh, to this so as well? Capital, Thank manage you. Yeah, Capital Management Group uh, recently purchased McGovern Honda in Brockton. Yes. I'm just seeking to transfer ownership. It's in Ward 3, Council. Any question? I have no questions. I'm in favor of. Any other questions, Councils? Seeing none, is there anyone here in, uh, else in favor? Third and final time? In favor? Close that part of the hearing. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone in the chamber in opposition? Third and final time. That part of the hearing is closed. Motion now comes on. Question is on a granting. All in favor of granting, please kindly raise your hand. If you oppose, raise your hand. It's granted. Thank you. Have a good evening. Very well. We have <coughs> Petition of Capital Management, LII, LCC, DBA, Ocean Honda of Brockton, 46352 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, for transfer of motor vehicle repair mechanical license located at 300 Manly Street, Brockton. The current owner is Matthew McGovern, DBA Mag Retail Holding, HND LLC, in City Clerk's Office, June 13, 2019. Hearing is signed for July 22, 2019 at 7 p.m. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objections. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Time having arrived, I, I declare this part of the hearing open. If you're in favor, please come forward to the podium on this agenda matter. Be the same sir. gentleman. <laughs> again, if you could kindly just state your name for the record. Jerry Nikolsky, Capital Management. And if, again, if you could just give a statement relative to this matter. Yep, just seeking to transfer the license uh, for the storage and repair of vehicle, motor vehicles. Council of Ward 3, any questions? I have no questions. I'm Councils, in favor of. Any questions? Seeing none, anyone else here in favor? Third and final time, anyone here in favor? That part of the hearing is closed. Is there anyone here that opposes this matter? 
Anyone in the chamber opposes? Third and final time, or opposition. That is uh, hereby closed as well. Now the matter and the question comes before us. In favor of granting, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, kindly raise your hand. The matter is hereby granted. Thank you, sir. Thank Have you. a good evening. Matter will stand. Is he up again? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You could. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. Please. Stay. Thank you. Petition of CP Exchange for I LLC DBA Ocean Honor of Brockton, 46352 Michigan Avenue, Canton, Michigan, for an above ground storage license located at 300 Manley Street, Brockton, and clerk's office June 13, 2019. Hearing is signed for July 22, 2019 at 7 p.m. All paperwork on file. Fire Department has no objection. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Time having arrived, uh, this I'm going to declare the part of the hearing is open. Sorry, again, if you can kindly state your name. Yep, Jared Nikolsky for Capital Management. Can you just mm -hmm. give a statement relative to the matter? Seeking to um, for a license to store vehicles above ground. Council again, from Ward 3, any no questions? questions in favor. Council, any questions? Anyone else here in favor? Third and final time. In favor? That's closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone here in opposition? Third and final time. Opposition, that's closed as well. Matter now comes before us. The question is on granting, Council. If you're in favor of granting, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It is granted. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. <laughs> Petition of Brockton Oak Street LLC for a transfer of name of current flammable storage license from Walmart Real Estate Business Trust to Brockton Oak Street LLC concerning a proposed Cumberland Farms facility at the premises located at 710 Oak Street, AKA 700 Oak Street, Brockton, Mass and an amendment to said license requesting a reduction in license gallonage for the underground storage license from 48,000 gallons to 40,000 gallons. In city clerk's office, July 9th, 2019. Hearing is signed for July 22nd, 2019 at 7 p.m. All paperwork on file and the fire department has no objections. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Time having arrived, I declare the hearing open. If you're here in favor, uh, kindly come to the podium and state your name. Good evening. How are you, Councillor? Good evening, uh, John Smolak, attorney for Cumberland Farms and Brockton Oak Street LLC. This matter is simply a, uh, uh, a request to amend the license, uh, flammable storage license that was originally granted back in December 27th of last year mm -hmm. to reduce the volume from 48,000 to 40,000. Since the last time uh, we were before the council, that property has been, uh, on which the Cumberland Farms is going to be developed, was sold by Walmart to Brockton Oak Street LLC. And so we wanted to make sure that the record reflects uh, those changes. Thank you, Attorney. The Ward 7 Council, anything relative to this? Nope, this is, as Attorney Smolak stated, this is um, just an amendment. They've been before us numerous times, and hopefully they will be able to move forward after yeah. this evening's uh, meeting. So thank you. Thank you, Council. Council, any other questions for the Attorney? Anyone else here in favor relative to this matter? Third and final time. That part of the hearing is going to be closed. Anyone here in opposition? Anyone in the chamber in opposition? Third and final time. Opposition, that matter is closed as well. Now the question comes before the council relative to granting. If you're in favor of granting, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, kindly raise your hand. It's hereby granted. Thank you, attorney. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. We have a report of the Finance Committee for its meeting of July 15, 2019. That's accepted and placed on file. Communication from the Chief of Police Department requests an authorization to expend grant monies in the amount of up to $20,000 received as a sub-recipient of the Plymouth County District Attorney's Office Grant Award under Fiscal 2017 Violent Gang and Gun Crime Reduction Program, Project Safe Neighborhoods. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Before I state that, Council Lally, please. Um, I'd like to move that we take item number 43 out of order and that we act on it Second. Tonight. Okay, let me just say, for number nine, that was read by the clerk, that's accepted and placed on file. Now we have a motion, and it was properly seconded to take number 43, you said, Councillor? Yes. Take 43 out of order. So motion on the floor, it was properly seconded. All in favor of taking 43 out of order? All opposed? We will hereby take 43 out of order. Thank you, Councillors. And I'd like to move on it to act on the suspension of the rules and deal with it tonight. Second. Okay. There's a motion, uh, and it was properly seconded to take on the suspension of the rules and act on it tonight. All in favor? All opposed, motion carries. We'll act on it tonight on suspension. Thank you, Councillor. Order that the City of Brockton does hereby take as temporary construction easements for highway purposes the parcels identified as TE007 through TE015 as permanent easement for highway purposes. The parcels identified as E004 through E010 and the utility easement for highway purposes 
identified as U002 through U006, and as shown on the plan entitled Plan of Land Showing Proposed Permanent Temporary and Utility Easement Parcel Taken in the City of Brockton, Mass., North Quincy Street, and Boundary Avenue. Council, do you have someone here tonight relative to this we, matter? We do have a couple people here. Uh, if you guys want to come I know, up I know the commissioner's and here, and yeah. Mr. Murphy's here. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, City Council. Um, Dan Murphy, CDM Smith. And uh, the, the order is to approve or accept the city uh, making motion to make official the easements necessary to construct the project at North Quincy Street, Boundary Ave, and Chestnut Street uh, on the Brockton Abington border. Uh, some permanent, some temporary, and some utility as noted uh, in the order of taking and in the layout plan. Um, compensation to property owners will be made using the city's Chapter 90 funds, and uh, they will allow the construction of the project that has been under design for the last few years. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Councilor Lally, have any questions? No, but I do want to note that this intersection has been, you know, people have, people have been really looking for a fix to this intersection for a long, long time. There have been fatalities. It's a, it's a real concern, and I'm, I'm happy to have, you know, people here and happy to see this, this progress. Thank you, Council. I know Council Beauregard had a question. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, I want to mention that we are grateful, and there's plenty of information available to the public on uh, the research done on how many car accidents were in that area over the years. And uh, right now, the proposal will allow the engineer, if he can present it, is to explain to us what will take place there, even though he's only here this evening for the easement, just so that there's no confusion. Thank you. Sure, yeah, just as a little bit of background, the, uh, the project seeks to take the intersection, which presently has no control on North Quincy Street, and stop sign control on Chestnut Ave and Boundary Ave, and replace it with a roundabout. Uh, the roundabout is, is an acknowledged uh, more safe and more efficient method of uh, moving traffic. Uh, accidents uh, decrease and the severity of those that do take place are less severe than those that might take place at a, the T intersection or the, the four-way intersection that's there now or even under a signalized intersection. Um, the continuous flow roundabout uh, allows for traffic to move continually uh, in order to just keep things moving so that there's no, no traffic backups, no congestion, and no uh, effective emissions, if you will, no stalled emissions from, from vehicles waiting, noise from trucks accelerating, things like that. Uh, key differences between the roundabout and the rotary that most of us are familiar with. Uh, the roundabout <coughs> requires deflection. As you see, the approach to a roundabout, it does bend towards the center of the circle and then away causing the vehicle to have to slow down to maneuver into the circle whereas a rotary many times the approach goes directly into the tangential part of the circle which doesn't require the vehicle to slow down as they enter so typically traffic within a rotary is traveling faster than you would find in a roundabout roundabouts are designed to slow traffic to about 20 miles per hour um, the other thing that is key at the roundabout is the pavement markings which require all approaches to yield to traffic already traveling in the circulatory roadway. And then the pavement markings are just another step of um, signifying to traffic that they do need to slow down. Uh, the splitter islands that are on each approach allow pedestrians to, to cross the street one approach at a time, one lane at a time, so they don't have to try to cross a wide sea of pavement like it's there now. Um, and they don't have to cross both directions of traffic. They can cross to the island and then wait and cross the next lane. Uh, those crosswalks are intentionally placed at least one vehicle length away from the roundabout itself to allow for them to cross uh, safely. So it's a little bit of the background, and uh, once completed, it will be a, a better thing for the traffic and uh, a nice-looking improvement to the intersection. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Councilors, any other questions for Mr. Murphy? Councilor Lally. I, I do just want to note, you know, again, uh, a lot of people had concerns or, con or questions, uh, and you know we've there's been meetings and things like that and discussions. Uh, the IIHS, to go off of, of what Mr. Murphy said, the IIHS um, says that roundabouts reduce fatal collisions by 90 percent uh, and pedestrian collisions by 40 percent. Mm. Um, a lot of the accidents on North Quincy Street at large, not just this intersection, are speed related. 
Uh, so I think, you know, if it's a green light, you can shoot right through that green light at whatever speed you were going. If it's a roundabout, you can't run a roundabout no matter what. And that's, I think that's what's most important for the intersection. So I, I wanted to thank you guys for coming out again and uh, for, for your work on this. Well said, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Lally, thank you. Any questions for the DPW Commission? Mr. Raleigh's here. Councillors, any questions for Larry? Now, the matter is going to come before us by a roll call vote, Councillors. Madam Clerk, if you could kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darincourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative. The matter is hereby approved and ordained, Councillors. And now we'll go back to agenda item number 10. With that communication, the mayor would recommend the same. That is accepted and placed on file. And the CFO is relative to the same. That too accepted and placed on file. We have a note from the chief of police department request an authorization <coughs> to expend grant monies related to the executive office of health and human services, department of mental health, fiscal 20, Massachusetts jail arrest Div division <coughs> program in the amount of $46,971. Accepted and placed on file. Are the mayor recommending the same. That to accept and placed on file. The CFO relative to the same. That also is accepted and placed on file. Com communication from the Chief of Police Department requesting authorization to expend grant monies in the amount up to $4,000 received as a subrecipient of the Plymouth County Outreach Grant Award under fiscal 2018 comprehensive opiate abuse program. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor recommending the same. That too counts as accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Communication from the chief of police department requesting authorization to expend additional grant monies in the amount of $6,399.95 received through the FFY 19 traffic enforcement and equipment grant program funds from the executive office of public safety and security Office of Grants and Reserve Highway Division for the purpose of purchasing traffic related equipment. That is accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor recommending the same. Also accepted and placed on file. Application from the CFO relative to the same. That too accepted and placed on file. Application from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 44 recommending the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Center Program Tax Increment Exemption Agreement, TIE, for 93 Center Street between the city and 93 Center Street, LLC. This proposed agreement would enable the development of 55 market rate <coughs> residential <coughs> units. The exemption proposed is for 60% for 20 years in property taxes applied to the increment above base value. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the That CFO. also is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor in accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Center Program Tax Increment Exception Agreement, 127 Center Street, between the City and 127 Center Corner, LLC. This proposed agreement would enable the development of 40 market rate residential units. The exception proposed is for fiscal years 1 through 5 at 100%, fiscal years 6 through 10 at 80%, and fiscal years 11 through 20 at 70%, and property taxes applied to the increment above base value. Counts is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 44, recommending the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed housing development and set of program tax increment exemption agreement for 19 through 31 Main Street between the City and Brockton Development Company, LLC. This proposed agreement would enable the development of 21 market rate residential units. The exemption proposed is for 100% for fiscal years 1 through 5 fiscal years 6 through 10 at 80 percent and fiscal years 11 through 20 at 70 percent and property taxes applied to the increment above base value. 
That is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That two counts is accepted and placed on file. Communication from the mayor's office, grants, quarter data, requested that the city council authorize the accepted expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $312,615.40 from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Action Grant to Mayor's Office Municipal Vulnerability excuse me, preparedness program <coughs> action fund. This proposed action grant with City of Barton MVP provider Fuss and O'Neill will develop an integrated vulnerability assessment and economic development plans for the climate resiliency. This is an in-match grant of $102,608.40 proposed project cost of $413,223.80. Accepted and placed on file. <coughs> From the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. The CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. We have an order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of West Meadow Drive, extending from Burroughs Road normally to Julie Avenue, a distance of about 647 feet more or less. And for that purpose, it's necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away a said city of Brockton. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, the question is on adoption by a roll call vote. Councilors, uh, Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Crude? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Eneary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Castro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. That's nine in the affirmative. Causes that order is hereby adopted. Actually, Constance, I'm remiss. I, I want to acknowledge the, the mayor. Mayor Rodriguez is here. And <laughs> thank you for being here tonight, Mayor. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> Order that the common necessity and convenience of the inhabitants of the city of Brockton require the laying out and acceptance of Julie Avenue, extending from Ash Street westerly, a distance of about 533 feet more or less, and for that purpose, it is necessary to take an easement for highway purposes and lay out as a public street away of the city of Brockton. In Council, April 22nd, 2019, Reagan created the Standing Committee on Finance and Planning. Those reports were favorable. Questions on adoption by roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Castro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Council says that order is hereby adopted. Promotion of Michael Livingston to the rank of Sergeant in the Brockton Police Department. In Council, June 24, 2019. Regularly referred to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Questions on confirmation by a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darrencourt? Yes. Eneary? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Monaghan? Oh, Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Cost says that promotion is hereby adopted. Promotion of David Farrell to the rank of Lieutenant in the Brockton Police Department in Council, June 24, 2019. We're going to refer to the Standing Committee on Finance. That report was favorable. Question is on confirmation by roll call that vote. Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Davenport? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Nicastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. That promotion is hereby adopted. Audit in accordance with Mass General Laws Chapter 44, the City Council authorizes the approval of Mass General Laws Chapter 32B, Section 20, as amended by Chapter 218, Section 15 of the Acts of 2016, and further authorize the participation in the Plymouth County OPEDB Trust Program. In Council, June 24, 2019, Reading for the Standing Committee on Finance, that report is favorable. Question is on a, oh, Councilor Fowler, I'm sorry, Councilor. Mr. President and Council. colleagues, as you may remember, I sent out an email about this uh, issue uh, within the past week, and there were two matters within this proposal that bothered me, but I was able to talk to Plymouth County Treasurer O'Brien, who is we'll here, this, them, Council, uh, here this evening. Thank you for being here tonight. The, the two issues that I was concerned about is what would be the minimal amount of money that we might have to put into such a trust 
and I'm told $250,000, which I think is certainly manageable. Hopefully we may have some additional revenues from marijuana taxation that would take care of that. The other issue I was concerned about was whether we might be forced into some type of a repayment plan, such as the kind that repays the unfunded pension liability uh, for the city, and I'm told that absent federal or state legislation, we do not have to do that. I agree with Treasurer O'Brien that I don't see the legislature forcing that down the throats of any communities, and hopefully the Congress will not do that. So I'm very pleased that we have this proposal in front of us. I think long term it will be of benefit to the city. And again, my thanks to uh, Treasurer O'Brien for the dialogue we had today. Any other questions or statements, Councillors? Seeing none, uh, the question uh, now comes before us by a roll call vote as adopted. Uh, Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Davenport? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. It's nine in the affirmative. That order is hereby adopted, Councillors. An ordinance repealing Article 19 of the Brockton City Ordinances relative to the establishment of the Thatcher Street Overlay District. Refer to ordinance and planning. Su substitute ordinance. An ordinance amending Chapter 27 of the Revised Ordinances of the City of Brockton be it ordained by the city councils as follows. Chapter 27 of the revised ordinances of the city of Brockton is hereby amended by amending the zoning district map in the vicinity of the northerly side of Belmont Street, westerly side of Pearl Street, and the northeasterly side of Stonehill Street. Said proposed change to be from R1 zone, single family residential zone, to C5 zone, office zones. Councils, that's referred to ordinance and planning. Order that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program Tax Increment Exemption Agreement for 93 Center Street between the City and 93 Center Street LLC. Refer to Finance Committee. <clears throat> Order that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed Housing Development Incentive Program Tax Increment Exemption Agreement for 127 Center Street between the City and 127 Center Corner LLC. Causes refer to Finance Committee. <clears throat> Order acceptance and expenditures of the total grant funds in the amount of up to $20,000 from Plymouth County District Attorney's Office Fiscal 2017 Violent Gain and Gun Crime Redu Reduction Program Grant Project Safe Na Neighborhoods to Brockton Police Department Fiscal 17 Violent Fiscal 2017 Violent Gain and Gun Crime Reduction Program Project Safe Neighborhoods Grant Fund. That too is referred to finance. Audit acceptance of expenditures of the total grant in the amount of $46,971 from the Executive Office of Health and Human Services Department of Mental Health, Fiscal 2020, Mass Jail Arrest Division Program, the City of Brockton Police Department of Mental Health 2020, Mass Jail Arrest Division Program Fund. Referred to finance. Order acceptance and expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $6,399.95 from the Executive Office of Public Safety and Security, Highway Safety Division, Fiscal 19 Traffic Enforcement Grant, to Brockton Police Department, Fiscal 19 Traffic Enforcement Grant Fund. That is referred to finance. Oh, Councilor. Yeah. Because of the small amount of money involved and the importance of traffic safety, I'd like to move that we suspend the rules and act on this this evening. Relative Second. to agenda item number 41, correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. So motion made, it was properly seconded uh, to act on the suspension of rules. Uh, all in favor of that? Oh, yeah. All opposed, that's going to carry. Um, matter's been read, and now it uh, comes before us, Council. Uh, it's a roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Kindly read the roll. ASAC? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Davenport? Yes. Ian Airy? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. Castro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Order is hereby adopted, Councillors. Acceptance and expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $4,000 from Fiscal 18 Bureau of Justice Assistance Comprehensive Opiate Abuse Site Based Program, East Bridgewater Police Department, Plymouth County Outreach Grant. 
Council Powell, do you want to entertain this one as well, or do you want to? Yes, I, if there's no objection, I would move to suspend the rules and act on this as evening. Second. 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 Motion made, it was properly seconded to uh, take, uh, take this under suspension and act. If you're in favor, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, we're gonna act on that under suspension. Uh, thus, uh, Madam Clerk, kindly read the roll. Asak? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Derrancourt? Yes. Ian Erie? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. DeCastro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. Matter is hereby approved and adopted. Order to number 44. <clears throat> Order that the City Council authorize the approval of the proposed housing development and center program tax increment exemption agreement for 1931 Main Street between the City of Brockton and Development Com Company LLC. Let's refer to Finance Committee Councils. Order. Acceptance of expenditures of total grant funds in the amount of $312,615.40 from the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Action Grant to Mayor's Office Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program Action Grant Fund. That also is referred to Finance Committee. The granting of National Grid and Mass Electric requested permission to install new pole P7-1, 70 feet east of existing pole number seven, in order to refeed the UG service and existing manhole MH82 on Warren Avenue and West Elm Street. That question now comes before us, Councilors, granting by a hand vote. If you're in favor, kindly raise your hand. If you're opposed, raise your hand. It's hereby granted. And I do believe we have a late file. Councilor Yes, uh, <clears throat> Mr. President, we do have a, a late file. I, bl I believe the clerk has it in regards to the um, Huntington School roof. And at the same time, I, I do want to suspend the rules and act on it this evening. Second. Mr. Petronio is here if we have any questions uh, uh, in regards to it. Thank you. Councilor, I just want to let you know uh, Mike Thomas, interim superintendent, uh, had a conflict tonight. He couldn't be here. Mm -hmm. He apologizes, but Mr. Petronio is here if there's any questions. Mr. Petronio, if you want to just come forward. And thank you for being here tonight, Aldo. And we'll have the clerk read it. From the interim superintendent of schools requesting that an appropriation any amount of $150,000 to perform a feasibility study for the need roof repairs to the Huntington Therapeutic Day School located 1121 Warren Avenue, Rockton. Accepted and placed on file. We have communication from the mayor recommending the same. Accepted and placed on file. Communication from the CFO relative to the same. That too is accepted and placed on file. We have an order that the following names sum being same is hereby appropriated as the same was submitted by the mayor as follows. Total appropriation of $150,000 from avail available funds free cash to school department $150,000 in order to fund a complete feasibility study for the Huntington Therapeutic Day School. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Mr. Petronio. Good evening. Thank Council, you, Council. Any questions for Mr. Petronio? Thank you. We'll start with Council Beauregard, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, okay. I'm all for the roof being fixed. I'm having a little trouble with the feasibility study. Is it for the services in the school or? Right, no, the MSBA has a process when we apply for funds to fix a school. And in applying for those funds, we receive approximately 80% funding on their end. So what they require us to first do is hire an architect, go in, he'll review the whole project, review the condition of the school. Oh, okay. That feasibility study that they'll do will say, if you put a new roof on here and if you spend a million dollars, you will get another 20 years life out of that roof. You know, you'll be able to um, still maintain all the classrooms in the building. So the MSBA wants to see that before they put up their 80% of the funds. Okay. So then uh -huh. they also, in that, they'll determine whether they put a shingle roof or a steel roof. Yeah. You know, they'll yes, determine that. All right, thank you very much. I was just having a little trouble with it meant the feasibility for the services at the school or for the building itself. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Yeah. Con any other questions? Council Cruz, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Petronio, for being here. So 150000 even if we move forward, we don't get that back, the 80% of that, do we? If the project is funded and completed, we'll receive our 80, roughly, uh, last project was about 78.5%. There's so a formula the, So we yes, approve we'll this 150, spend it for the feasibility study. That does get replaced. Providing we complete the project, yes. Project. And generally speaking, if we get to this point, they're usually, you wouldn't be asking for this if you thought they were going to say no. Correct. They've already been out to the school. Their engineers have walked the school. They've gone on the interior with us. They've seen the... Um, the condition of the beams inside. They've seen the, the, we actually have plastic pools collecting the water that's coming mm -hmm. in, and then a fancy system that drains those plastic pools outside. <laughs> um, they've seen all of that. So the engineers have basically said, you know, that this is a good project. 
Now the question is how much will it cost and what's the best way to repair it? Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Councilor Cruz. Any other questions, Councilor Mr. Just, uh, just one. If I might, just, Neary, thank you. Just one comment because um, this is very important to me. You have in the Huntington School in in uh, Ward Three, and it's at the uh, gem of right where our uh, South Street uh, uh, Historic District is. Mm -hmm. um, I think what's very interesting um, is the fact that, and Aldo pointed it out to me the other day, here's a school that's 120 years old, and we're finally repairing its roof, and we get school buildings that are 20, 25 years old, and we got a problem with roofs. So. Um, interesting enough. So, uh, in, in any case, once this is done, this still maintain th be able to maintain this building for at least 25 more years as a school building or for whatever we need it for, which could be a school building again for all we know. Correct. That's right. part of the feasibility studies. The MSBA wants to see that it's going to basically stay open and maintain for educational it. purposes. Yes. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. President. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions, Councillor? There was a motion made. It was properly seconded to take on the suspension of the rules. All in favor, of taking on the suspension of the rules. All opposed, we will. The matter now comes before us. A roll call vote, Madam Clerk. Asac? Yes. Beauregard? Yes. Cruz? Yes. Darincourt? Yes. Ianeri? Yes. Farwell? Yes. Lally? Yes. De Castro? Yes. Sullivan? Yes. Nine in the affirmative. That order is hereby adopted, Councillors. Uh, Councilors, that's the end of the agenda tonight. Is there any uh, moments? Of, uh, we'll go with Councilor Azak and then Councilor Fowler, please. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'm sad to announce that last week the city of Brockton and Ward 7 lost its oldest resident at the age of 105 years old, wow. Francis Gonski. Uh, just this past May, Mayor Carpenter and myself were invited to attend her birthday party with um, her family and friends, and it was a celebration, and she was full of smiles. It was really a wonderful afternoon. So um, her services will be tomorrow and Wednesday, um, and Wednesday. so Tuesday and Wednesday at Waite Funeral Home. And um, I would just like to send out my condolences to her daughter, Irene, and her son-in-law, Bob O'Grady, who are Ward 7 residents. May she rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Councillor Fowell. Mr. President, I have a late file. I would request that it be admitted and read by the clerk. Second. Motion made was properly second for a late file. All in favor? All opposed. Motion carries. Uh, Resol Mr. Clerk. Resolved that the Mayor Moses M. Rodriguez be invited to the Finance Committee meeting of August 19, 2019, to provide an overview of the goals and objectives of the administration and to review his first month in office. That is referred to the said date Finance Committee. We look forward to it, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> Careful what you wish for. Councilor Beauregard, please. Well, I wanted a moment of personal privilege. Yes, Councilor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay, a couple of things here. First of all, they had a marvelous graduation with the Edison uh, Academy. I believe they had the most uh, graduates and it was very well attended and very impressive. And uh, then, um, because it was a very impressive week, we had Broughton High School Alumni Basketball Clinic. Now, we all remember how warm it was on Saturday. There's no air conditioning in the gym. They had the fans going. 50 volunteers doing this basketball clinic for the kids. And they were out there for five hours, inside and out, and did a barbecue for them and everything else. And this is all a free clinic put um, together by Broughton High alumni. And on last note, Broughton High alumni, those of you that are lucky enough to have graduated from Broughton High, all 60,000 of you all over. And uh, we will be holding a fun time, we'll call it, from five to eight um, in downtown Broughton at the, um, they, they call it the Beer Garden Prova, from five to eight that Thursday night, August 1st. And we just hope that some of you join us. People are reconnecting and it's um, on these um, occasions when we gather, we have people sometimes from, uh, I'm going to say uh, seven decades coming out there and, and having a good time. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Yep. Any other, any other councillors? Uh, councillors, as the president, I, I just want to make you aware of um, two, uh, two matters that are going to be coming before us. Um, on Monday, and you might want to jot this down, on Monday, August 5th, 2019, 6.30 p.m. here in the council chamber, there's going to be a special joint committee meeting of the city council and the school committee. There'll be a vote taken relative to the unexpired term of the Ward 2 School com Committee member, Lisa Plant. Um, if anybody here in the audience or anyone watching on TV has any interest, they may file a letter of interest and a resume to the city clerk, Mr. Zioli. Uh, that will be at 6.30 with the joint committee. Okay. Then the school committee members will adjourn 
we will stay councilors and sit as a special city council meeting um, and that will be relative to filling the unexpired term of our new mayor Council at large Moises Rodriguez again if there's anyone interested in that position Come please on. send her a letter of interest and a resume to the city clerk Mr. Zioli any questions relative to those two matters councilors none seeing none I wish everybody good evening matters adjourned Should be.